Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here's a complete overview of my turn-based strategy course, all of the steps that we're going to take starting from a completely empty project until the final polished game, and also including the two free bonus expansions. This course is targeted for more intermediate users who want to take their skills from beginner to the next level. The goal is not just to learn how to make a game like this, but rather how to do it properly, so it has a heavy focus on writing good clean code and good project structure, so you can then expand upon it in many different ways. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to start completely from scratch, so the first thing we're going to do is create a brand new project. After opening up Unity, we're going to set up the layout, then we're going to verify that the universal render pipeline is all installed correctly, and we're going to import the asset pack that we're going to use. After that, we're going to set up some basic post-processing to make the game look nice. With that, the basic setup won't be done, then for starting to actually make the game, we're going to begin in the unit movement and unit selection section, first by setting up the actual unit. Again, the focus on this course is on building the game and building it correctly, so so it's very important that we are careful with how we set up all of our game objects. With the unit setup, we're going to begin handling movement, then we're going to handle the mouse, learn how to do a raycast, and learn the differences between screen space and world space. With that, we're going to calculate the mouse world position and learn about layer masks. Then we have one of the most important lectures on this course. It's all about why you should never make anything public and what is the alternative that you should use. Then we have everything ready to add the ability to click on the world and have the unit move to that position. After that, we're going to download some animations and import them into Unity and set them up. Then we're going to learn about the Unity animator and how we can add some animations. Then learn about how to control animations using animator parameters so that the unit has the proper idle and walk animations, all of them working correctly. With that done, we're going to handle the unit rotation to face the move direction and do it nice and smoothly. Next, we're going to create a unit action system and add the ability to select a unit so we can have multiple units and give different orders to each one individually. With the unit selection working, we need some visual, so we're going to do that whilst also learning about another extremely powerful C-sharp feature called events. And the final lecture on this section covers another extremely important topic, which is the singleton pattern and how we're going to use it in this course. After that, we move on to the crucial section all about the grid system and the camera. This is really the core of the game, so we're going to spend some time just going over the design that we're going to implement. Then we start building the grid system, creating the class and setting up the basics. With that done, we're going to create a grid object class that will be instantiated in every grid position. These objects are difficult to see since they really have no visual, so we're going to create a nice debug visual object that we can easily see so we can inspect what is going on inside each grid position. Then with the core grid system done, we're going to create a nice level grid class that will manage the entire level grid. Next, we're going to install Cinemachine. This is a Unity tool that makes camera handling super easy. We're going to use it to create a script to move and rotate the camera, and then we're going to handle zooming in and out. With all that done, we move on to the next section, covering actions and the UI. We begin by making the most simple action, just a basic move action. This is another very important lecture because it covers something that is extremely important part of game development, which is refactoring code. With the basic move action working, we're going to add some validation logic to match our game rules. Next, we're going to create a grid visual prefab so we can visualize which grid positions the unit can move to. After that, we're going to build our second action. Again, we start off by making something extremely basic, just a spin action. Basically, the goal of this is to refactor the code to be able to support multiple actions. With multiple actions implemented, we're going to handle the logic to make sure only one action can be active at a time. Then it's going to be time to implement the UI. We're going to create the canvas and set it up. Then build a simple UI so we can see all of the actions available on the selected unit. After that, we handle clicking on the action buttons to select the active action. And then once again, we're going to refactor some code to create a nice and generic take action function. Then we're going to handle updating the UI. This is another extremely important lecture because it covers how to properly decouple your code by using C# -sharp events. The underlying actions and the units, they don't care about the UI at all. The game runs perfectly fine with or without UI, it's completely decoupled. Next, we're going to create a simple element to show while an action is busy, then introduce the concept of action points so that units have a limited number of actions they can take, and then create a nice turn system which will handle keeping track of the current turn and resetting action points. Then we move on to the enemies in combat section. We begin by creating an enemy, again, all while focused on writing good clean code and good project structure, so it's going to be based on the regular unit object. Once we have the enemies, the next obvious step is to implement a shoot action so we can damage them. With the action logic working, we're going to implement the animations to make it nice and visual, and then add a nice bolt visual. We're going to use the trail render and the particle system to make it look good. With the shooting working, we need some concepts of health, so we're going to create a nice health system. With health working, we're going to implement a very fun thing. We're going to use the Unity Ragdoll Wizard to make a fun ragdoll that won't flop to the floor when the unit dies. 
Next, we're going to learn all about another very useful Unity feature, which is World Canvases. With this, we're going to create a nice UI element on top of each unit to display the health and the action points. Then we're going to polish our shoot action by adding a nice action camera, once again using Cinemachine, so it's going to be pretty easy. Next, we're going to modify the grid visual to support different colors. That way, the move action has one color and the shoot action has another. Then for something pretty important, we're going to implement some basic enemy AI, just add the logic for the enemy to take their turn, and then we're going to build upon that in order to add some more complex AI so the enemies can actually move towards the player units and shoot at a target. Once again, the focus on this course is writing good clean code that we can expand upon, so the pattern that we're going to use to make the AI, it can then be expanded upon with all kinds of new AI rules. Afterwards, we get to another very important section. This one is all about pathfinding. In order to implement this properly, the first thing we need to do is actually learn about C Sharp generics. This is another extremely important C Sharp feature. With that knowledge, we're going to refactor the grid system to support generics. Doing that will enable us to reuse the exact same class for both the pathfinding and the grid logic. But before we get to work on implementing the pathfinding, we're going to look at the design of the algorithm that we're going to implement. So we're going to learn how A star pathfinding works. After that, we begin by creating the main script and set it up with a grid object with all of the pathfinding data that we're going to need. And then we begin to actually implement the algorithm. This is something that sounds pretty complex, but it's actually not. It might take a while to click, but once you understand how the algorithm works, it's actually pretty straightforward. With some basic pathfinding working, we're going to add support for obstacles and then use some visual assets to make an interesting level. After that, we just refactor our move action to use our pathfinding algorithm. With that done, we come to the polish section. We begin with a fun, simple effect, just adding some screen shake. Then we add another fun action, a nice grenade that deals damage in a radius. After the logic is working, then we implement the visuals on top. Next, we add some destructible crates. This involves learning how to update the pathfinding when an object is destroyed. Then we're going to learn how to make some nice satisfying destruction in Unity by using ProBuilder, which is their built-in modeling tool. Using that, we're going to slice the crate into parts and then make them explode. After that, for another fun action, we're going to make a sword melee attack. This one has a very short range, but deals a ton of damage. Next, we make a super important action, a generic interact action. And then we have another extremely important lecture where we're going to make it so that the interact action, that one can be used to do all kinds of things, like for example, opening doors or destroying a prop. Really, this interact action can do anything you can think of, and this really just involves learning about C Sharp interfaces, which is another must know C Sharp feature. After that, we're going to refactor our input to use the new input system package, and then we're going to take everything that we've built and make a really nice playable level that has several player units, lots of actions, a nice world with some level scripting, and various enemies. With that, we're going to have our nice final polish game. However, that is really just the main course portion. Since the course was originally released, I have since added two free expansions after the main course contents. The first expansion is on adding hex grid support, so how to convert the main course code, which has a square grid, and convert that into a hex grid. Thanks to how all of the code is set up in a nice clean way, this is actually a relatively simple change. To do this, we're going to first look at the design that we're going to implement and how hexes differ from square grids. Then we start by implementing the design, beginning with the conversion from and to world and grid position, and then we're going to refactor the pathfinding to also work with hex that's pretty much all it takes to implement this nice expansion. With this, everything in the game, all the actions, all the AI, everything works on a perfect hex grid. And then for the second expansion, this one is adding multi floor support. And this can be added to either the square grid or the hex grid. First, we're going to refactor the main level grid to support multiple grid systems. Then refactor the pathfinding to make it work with multiple floors. After that, we're going to create a nice editor script for defining pathfinding links. Then handle the visual for making a proper jump and fall animation. And finally, handle the visibility so the player can still play on the bottom floors. All right, so that's it. That's the overview of the whole course, including the two free bonus expansions. We start coming from scratch, and by going through it step by step, we end up with a really awesome turn-based strategy game. And again, the most important thing is you will learn a ton about how to write good clean code and how to manage a complex project. By the end, you will have gained a massive amount of knowledge that will enable you to build all kinds of games by either expanding upon this game or making something completely original. Check the link in the description to get the course, and I really hope it helps you on your learning journey.